This is the News on AT International. I am Mina Daniels. First, the headlines. Federal government encourages more investments in agricultural projects at the grassroots level. Plus, G7 defense ministers hold summit in Italy against backdrop of escalating conflicts in the Middle East. President Bola Tinubu has commended former head of state General Yakubu Gowon, whom he says can be rightly called the father of national infrastructure for his significant contributions to nation building and development. In a statement he personally issued to celebrate General Gowon at 90, President Tinubu says the celebrant's sterling example remains a beacon of help and inspiration for those in government, encouraging them to do their best for the country. Acknowledging the former head of state as a gentleman extraordinary, one of the longest serving Nigerian leaders, the president describes him as a brilliant officer trained at Sandhurst and reluctantly became Nigeria's leader at 32 and whose his life story has inspired many Nigerians. The president significantly acknowledged his philosophy of no victor, no vanquished, which helped promote national healing, peace and reconciliation after the country's civil war. It describes the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, founded in 1975 as General Gowon's most incredible legacy. President Tinubu says since he became the nation's leader, General Gowon has been his counselor, offering advice when needed. He recalls his role when the ECOWAS had a misunderstanding with some of the Sahelian states calling for moderation from all sides for the sake of ECOWAS unity. Former Nigerian head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, is 90 at a public lecture to set the tune for a series of events to mark his birthday. Speakers emphasize the need to build a global Nigeria that the likes of General Gowon envisioned. Kevin Ewonaye reports. Reputed for being among those who laid the foundation for a new Nigeria. At 90, the former head of state, no doubt, speakers noted, would have loved to see a greater, secured, and self sufficient Nigeria at this time of his life. But, like the guest lecturer, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, president of the Africa Development Bank Group, said, now is the time for the country's leaders to begin to rebuild the country to take its place in the global space. A country that put education as priority because without a formidable human capital, Nigeria will not attain its potential to lead Africa into prosperity. A reason the AFDB is investing $100 million to establish a youth entrepreneurship investment bank in Nigeria. As head of state, General Gawan's national development plan was a masterpiece. Nigeria instituted an industrial policy to support automobile assembly plants. How proud we were to ride made in Nigeria Pojos and Volkswagens. From President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, to former President Ulushe Gwambasanjo, the unifying personality of General Yakub Gawan is a testament that a united and progressive Nigeria is possible. Our president has tremendous respect for your person and for your services to our dear uh, country. You are worthy to be nationally celebrated while you are still alive. We owe him immense gratitude for the perseverance and tenacity in keeping this country in one peace and at peace with itself. Other former Nigerian leaders sent in goodwill messages to elogize the celebrant, who himself, in his usual way, called for a sense of nationhood among Nigerians. Thank you all uh, for celebrating my 90th birthday. Now, may I also wish, wish each and every one of you your happy birthday and future 90th birthday. <laughs> Abu 
Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. And the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator Joe Jacome, and the Federal Executive Council congratulates the former Head of State, General Yakubo Gowan, on the occasion of his 90th birthday anniversary. In a statement by the Director, Information and Public Relations, SGF, describes General Gowan as an icon of unity and a champion for the national integration and peaceful coexistence in the country, as exemplified by the formation of National Youth Service Corps, NYAC. Describing him as a trailblazing statesman, his unflinching quest for unity transcends the frontiers of the nation as he co-founded the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, in order to bring unity and promote economic cooperation among member states in the African sub-region. The federal government The Northern Senators Forum congratulates General Yakubu Gowan on his 90th birthday. In a statement, Chairman of the Forum, Senator Abdulaziz Musa Yaadua, describes General Gowan as a visionary leader dedicated to Nigeria's unity and progress, who has left a mark on the nation's history. He adds that Gowan's leadership style was crucial in guiding Nigeria into a new era after the Civil War. He demonstrates, he demonstrates an, a wavering commitment to peace and stability. The Northern People's Forum wishes General Gowan many more years of good health, happiness, and continued service to Nigeria. Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinubu has described General Yakubu Gowan as one of Nigeria's finest leaders. She said this at a Thanksgiving service held at the Christian Center in honor of General Yakubu Gowan as he closed Naithi. On his part, the celebrant General Gowan expressed great joy to God for his life. I realize that your life is a life destined by God, who called you to be an exemplary leader of good in this world of cynicism and despair. On his part, the celebrant General Gowan expressed great joy to God for his life. We must continue uh, to work and, uh, you know, as Nigerians the best, uh, you know, the best you know, we can. The service well attended by serving in past Nigerian leaders as well as religious leaders praise General Yakubu Gowan's sterling leadership qualities which have further united the country. The federal government in adherence to program guidelines has approved the disbursement of 12.911 billion naira to the four gateways of basic health care provision fund for the fourth quarter of 2024. Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Ali Pate, who revealed this at the BHCPF committee meeting in Abuja, assures of accountability in the course of implementation which targets all public health outcomes. Olushe Adeamo reports. Only makes 2.4% of the world's population, but currently accounts for 10% of the global deaths of pregnant mothers, with that of infant mortality standing at 128 per 1,000 births for under fives. The Basic Health Care Provision Fund, BHCPF, is a strategic funding the federal government is using to address these worrisome statistics. It's the eighth Ministerial Oversight Committee meeting of the BHCPF, and the review indicates some progress in the retraining of the targeted 120,000 health workers towards addressing gaps in the sector. There's an element, for instance, when it comes to tracking financial flows uh, to the states, to primary health care centers. As you have heard, the integrated healthcare workers training is on the way. We had announced that we retrain 120,000 frontline health workers as part of the president's initiative 
40,000 have already been retrained in uh, states and more will be trained going forward. And I believe that uh, the president's leadership, even on the continent, as the African Union champion on human resources for health and community health delivery, is being backed by action that is being taken place uh, by the federal government here in Nigeria. At the Ministerial Oversight Committee, we saw a lot of progress. What we are seeing is that there is an ambitious plan to upgrade health facilities to make them functional 24-7. We as UNICEF, we are a proud partners of that effort and to see how primary health care facilities are going to be upgraded nationwide here in Nigeria. The Ministry of Oversight Committee on BHCPF is expected to reconvene in mid-December to disburse funds for the first quarter of 2025 in Abuja, Ulusheye, Adiagbo, and CA News. And the extractive industry in Nigeria can be the icing on the cake for the rapid successes being recorded in attracting more females into the field of engineering and technology. At the 2024 annual Nketinyere Osigwe Lecture in Abuja, stakeholders challenged female engineers to break the barriers in the mining sector. Kelvin Ewonaye reports. It's one of the conservative fields of endeavor where few women dare to venture into. But the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWIN, believes that if women can do well in other areas of engineering and technology, they can replicate the feat in the mining sector, which boasts even more opportunities for women. The Nkechinyere Osigwe Lecture this year is therefore focusing on breaking barriers and seizing opportunities in the extractive industry with key players in the sector, laying out the pathway to achieving that objective. So much in mining which we are not taking advantage of and we are not aware of women that are in mining and it's a great opportunity. Citing aspects of mining and sharing with the children some key fun facts about mining and how it's important in our everyday lives. The event was also used to reward some female students excelling in science and technology to encourage them to keep their eyes on the ball. In Abuja, Kelvin Ebonwaye, NTA News. The federal government is encouraging more investors to increase their investments in agricultural projects at the grassroots level. Minister of State for Agriculture and Food Security, Ali Sabi Abudlahi, highlighted this during interactions with investors in Abuja. Musa Baba Ali reports. This is an investment meeting between officials of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security and agro-allied investors. The investors have expressed interest in investing in Nigeria's informal commodity market through upgrades and linkages with processing markets. Plans are underway to establish these markets in Kano, Ibadan and Owere Imo states. The proposal is to design, build and operate four food hubs uh, in each main Nigerian corridors that we've been studying. The concept is to offer to agri-food professionals a single window uh, which dedicated ecosystem, well, the, welcoming all types of actors in the agri-food system in place and which will allow synergies between, uh, between them. I thought I should voice it out. Alou Sabi Abdelahi, the, the Minister of State for Agriculture and Food Security, welcomed the development but stress the need to involve all tiers of government. We should flow with the current thinking of President Bola Metinubu with respect to granting local government autonomy. Less in the model we're going to develop, deliberately and intentionally find a way of making sure they are prepared and placed in that spot where they should be the receptacle. He emphasized that the federal government will continue to provide an enabling environment to enhance food production in the country. The rural market investment will fall under the oversight of the Rural Road Agriculture and Market Program, which is jointly funded by the federal government, states, and the World Bank. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Well, let's take a breather now. More reports shortly. On August 1, 1966, a series of events thrust a 31-year-old to the wheel as Nigeria's head of state, who was to be at the helm for nine more years. Yakubu Gowan is 90. 
How do I look like? Don't I look combative instead of being shy? Gerald Gowan tells us his story. Was there a time when money was not our problem, but how to spend it? You know, when I say that we have uh, the, you know, so much money, we, we, uh, I, I didn't say that we, that, uh, uh, that we do not know what, what to, do, uh, to do with it. Join us on the network service of the NTA for a special documentary on Gowan. Go on with One Nigeria on Saturday, the 19th of October, 2024, at 8 p.m. The co-managing directors of Mesotha Group Limited, developers of Kubo International Market, Honorable Jerry Joseph Damara and Pastor Chinemeram Dixon, celebrate former head of state and elder statesman, General Yakubu Gawan, on his 90th birthday. They describe him as a patriot and leader par excellence, with numerous accomplishments across various fields. Happy birthday, Your Excellency. Honorable Jerry Joseph Damara and Pastor Chinemeram Dixon, announcers. Thanks for staying with us. Gunmen in two vehicles chased down and shot dead the lawyer of Mozambique's leading opposition politician and a senior opposition official in their SUV late at night on a main avenue in the capital, Maputo. Their party confirmed this on Saturday in a brutal burst of violence that rocked a country where tensions were already high and a disputed election. The countries came as the, the killings came as the opposition party, the two men were associated with, prepared to challenge the results of this month's presidential election that drew more allegations of vote rigging and clamping down on dissent against the long ruling governing party, which has been in power for nearly 50 years. Spokesperson for the party in a statement, Padomas said, the two killed were Elvinos Diaz, a lawyer and advisor to opposition presidential candidate, Venancio Mondel, and Paul Gombe, a senior member. Podemos is a relatively new opposition party that challenged the 49-year rule of the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, or Free Limo Party, in the October 9 election. And of course, the Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni has slammed attacks on United Nations peacekeepers as unacceptable after the UN force accused Israeli troops of firing at their positions in southern Lebanon. Meloni, the first head of state or government to visit Lebanon since the escalation between Israel and Hezbollah started last month, demanded the protection of the UNIFIL force, which includes Italian peacekeepers. Meloni said during a press conference with her Lebanese counterpart, Najib Mikati, that she considers targeting UNIFIL unacceptable and asks once again that all parties strive to ensure that all times that the safety of each of the soldiers is guaranteed. These soldiers have contributed for years to the stability of the border between Lebanon and Israel and they will be needed in any post-conflict scenario. True. This is why I repeat that I consider targeting UNIFIL unacceptable, and I ask once again that all parties strive to ensure that all times the safety of each of uh, these soldiers is guaranteed. This is also why I'm convinced that UNIFIL must be strengthened, only by strengthening UNIFIL while maintaining its impartiality, we will be able to turn the page. Uh, and I think that we have to come back to the initial mission of UNIFIL and to do it properly in coordination with LAF. Italy has about 1,000 troops as part of the UN Peacekeeping Force in Lebanon, which has come under repeated fire in the Israeli Hezbollah war in recent days. G7 Defense Ministers started talks on Saturday against the backdrop of escalation of the Middle East and mountain pressure on Ukraine as it faces another winter of fighting. The summit is holding in Naples, Italy. Details with Justin Bemoyi. Italy 
Holding the rotating presidency of the Group of Seven Countries organized the body's first ministerial meeting dedicated to defense in Naples, the southern city that is also home to a NATO base. Italian Defense Minister Guido Cruzetto welcomed each of the attendees, including NATO Chief Mark Rutti and the EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell. Cruzetto said, as he opened the event, that he believes the summit sends a strong message to those who try to hinder democratic systems. He said the brutal Russian aggressions in Ukraine and the indeed critical situation in the Middle East combined with the profound instability of sub-Saharan Africa and the increasing tension in the Indo-Pacific region highlight a deteriorated security framework with forecasts for the near future that cannot be positive. He also hinted that ample space would be given to discussing the escalating Middle East conflict during the one-day summit. Also on the summit's agenda is the war in Ukraine, development and security in Africa, and the situation in the Asia-Pacific. The meeting comes two days after Israel announced it had killed Hamas chief Yahya Sinwar, mastermind of the October 7, 2023 attacks on Israel that triggered the devastating retaliatory war in Gaza. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. Moscow is hosting the BRICS Business Forum, where business people from the BRICS group of countries gather to share their thoughts about economic growth. Russian President Vladimir Putin attended the meeting's plenary session. This forum is one of the final BRICS gatherings ahead of next week's major summit in Russia, city of Kazan. Business people line up on Friday, waiting to enter hall for the plenary session and participants were eager to share their thoughts. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the GDP of the BRICS countries was around $63 trillion last year. <clears throat> That's about 37% of the world, surpassing the G7 countries with 29%. Putin talked about the BRICS role in the world's economy and the goals of the organization. And that message was welcomed among those attending the business forum. They see a lot of opportunities for their businesses in the BRICS countries, particularly in infrastructure development. <clears throat> Egypt has uh, so many projects within Africa, so collaborative cooperation with BRICS member states uh, to do projects in infrastructure uh, with Egyptian companies is a benefit win-win for both sides. Uh, Egypt imports 50% of its food where BRICS is one of the main suppliers. BRICS economies are projected to rise at a faster pace than the rest of the world. In barely four months after its first ever inaugural lecture was held, now university has yet again taken another leap forward with another impactful lecture. Charles Arthur reports are the second inaugural lecture delivered by a professor of computer vision and engineering, Steve Adeshina, focused on machine versus human intelligence. Can computer outperson humans? The debate on whether the advent of advanced machines and artificial intelligence will someday take over human operations or end humans themselves rages on. Here at the Nile University of Nigeria, experts are providing logical explanations as to why this is mere theories. It was the second inaugural lecture of Nile University, and the focus of this mandatory academic exercise was on machine intelligence versus human intelligence. Can machines outperform human? Not only was it regarded as timely, but an interesting topic to those listening. With clarity of thoughts and fluency of speech, Steve Adeshina, a professor of computer vision and engineering, with all of his research in this presentation, was convinced 
both human and AI have their comparative advantages but can't see machine outperforming humans anytime. When it comes to context, when it comes to ethical judgment, should you kill a rat or a human being? Uh, machines haven't done so well there. So as we stand, I would say machines have yet to surpass human intelligence. For the Vice Chancellor of Nile University, Professor Dili Dogo, Professor Additional's work elucidates and exposed the wrong narrative about robots and robotics. Now, the lecture is very important because in the age of artificial intelligence, many questions are coming up. Though machines can be innov innovative, they are not creative. They need us to learn from us. For him, the second inaugural lecture demonstrated the pace at which Nile University of Nigeria is moving and the impact additional research will have on governance, business, and private organizations. Nile University has become the institution of first choice across Nigeria. Back there, if I take you up there, you will see we have a fabrication lab. We can do 3D printing. We can do almost everything we need to do to impact on automotive industry, to impact on engineering, to impact on other sciences. Inaugural lectures are mandatory academic exercise recognized by University Act as part of professional requirements for inductions. Charles Alpha, NTA News. Weather prospect is next. That's the news on 18 International. Thank you for being there. I am Mina Daniels.